Welcome to A&M Awesome Animals! Hello everyone! Today we'll be traveling to Scotland and we'll be talking about the Scottish Terrier. Please don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for future weekly videos. Scotties were originally bred to hunt and kill vermin on farms and to hunt badgers and foxes in the highlands of Scotland. The actual origin of a breed as old as the Scottish Terrier is obscure and undocumented. Historically, the Scotty was bred by farmers to help them manage vermin problems. He would follow prey such as badgers, foxes, and other vermin right into their burrows and then try to dig them out. Such breeds of dogs are known as earth dogs. Scottish Terriers do well in earth dog trials, which are a simulated hunt. Scottish Terriers are often described as a big dog in a little dog's body. They are feisty, independent, and sometimes excitable. As adults, their behavior can become moody. Some Scotties take to only one person. Scotties can be aggressive with other pets and stubborn about training. Unlike some other dogs, they do not demand great amounts of attention from their guardians. They make excellent house pets for those who would delight in their sometimes quirky personality and be able to provide gentle but firm handling. The Scottish Terrier is a small, short-legged dog with a compact and sturdy build. The average height is 10 inches. The weight ranges from 19 to 22 pounds for a male and 18 to 21 pounds for a female. The Scottish Terrier can suffer from a number of genetic health problems. They include cataracts, progressive retinal atrophy, neurological problems, brain cancer, bladder cancer, bladder stones, Cushing's disease, hypothyroidism, von Willebrand's disease, a blood clotting disorder, hemophilia, and deafness. Despite having a background in extermination, the little dogs have also enjoyed the finer things in life. King James IV of Scotland was a huge fan of the Scottish Terrier in the 17th century and helped popularize them in Europe. He even sent six Scotties to France as a gift. Queen Victoria was also a fan of the breed and kept them in her expansive kennel. Her favorite was a Scottie named Laddie. When Scotties get too excited, they might experience something known as the Scottie cramp. This neurological disorder causes the muscles to tense up, making it difficult to walk. Dogs experiencing this cramp exhibit a goose stepping gait and might somersault or fall over. Luckily, these episodes don't last long and do not appear to be painful for the dogs. The Scottish Terrier and the German Shepherd are the only two breeds to make three appearances in the White House. The Roosevelt family was infatuated with the breed and had two. Eleanor Roosevelt had one named Maggie and FDR had one named Fowler, short for Murray the Outlaw of Fowler Hill. Roosevelt loved his dog so much that he was barely seen without it. You can even see a statue of Fowler next to his bronzed owner at the Franklin Delano Roosevelt Memorial in Washington, D.C. Most modern-day Scotties can trace their lineage back to one female named Splinter II. She was owned by J.H. Ludlow, founder of the Scottish Terrier Club of England. She's considered the mother of the breed. The Scottie has been one of the most beloved game pieces in the Mobley since its introduction in the 1950s. In fact, it received the most votes in a recent competition to determine which pieces will get to stay a part of the set. Besides the Wire Fox Terrier, the Scottish Terrier has the most Westminster dog show wins of any breed, with a whopping 8 awards. The most recent win was in 2010 with a dog named True Roundtown Mercedes of Mariscot, Sadie for short. Scotties are born diggers. Terriers were bred to dig and find prey, so it makes sense that they would be compelled to hit the dirt. Even if your Scottie is not a hunter, they may dig for your comfort or out of boredom. To keep your rod and drawn safe, make sure your dog is mentally stimulated and gets plenty of exercise. Families will have no trouble getting affection from their Scotties, but strangers might have to work for it. The dogs are naturally wary of new people and it takes them a while to come around. As the name suggests, Scottish Terriers come from Scotland, and that's about all we know. The first known mention of the dog was by Bishop John Leslie in his book History of Scotland from 1436 to 1561. As he describes them, they are a dog of low height which creeping into subterraneous burrows, roots, or foxes. Badgers, martens, and wild cats from their lurking places and dens. If you've enjoyed this video, please smash that like button and subscribe to our channel for future weekly videos. See you guys next time. Goodbye!